How to improve our English speaking skill? Well, let me get straight to the point. The only way to improve your speaking skill is to speak. Hello, my name is Mandy from POC English, and in this lesson, we are going to talk about how to improve our speaking skills. As I said earlier, the only way to become more fluent in English language is to speak more and more and more. But then there are a lot of questions by students like, we don't have a speaking partner, or how do we know if you're making mistakes, or we have a speaking partner, but we don't know what to say, or we have a speaking partner, but we speak in our own language. What? How's that gonna help? All right, so let's clear things up. Here are the things you need to do. And number one is speaking comes last. Now, what do I mean? If you have no idea what to say, what vocabulary to use, how to say it, what tense to use, and you have no idea about the topic itself, how are you going to speak? So what's your job? I'm a... Um... Mm, if you are uh, <coughs> a chimp, <laughs> I will. Um, uh. That is impossible. First, you need to learn some words. For example, career. Career basically means your job, your occupation, or your profession. But learning this word itself is not enough. You need to learn some adjectives, some verbs, some nouns, and some phrases that often collocate with career. And these are called collocations. Collocations are a group of words that often sit together. For example, if you want to use some adjectives with the word career, you can say a promising career, which basically means a career with a very bright future, right? If you are a teacher, you can use the adjective teaching and say a teaching career. If you work in a university, you can say an academic career. If you do sports for a living, you can say a sporting career, or you can say a musical career if you play music professionally. We can also use some verbs to talk about career. For example, you can say have, to have a career, I have a career. You have a career. We can say begin, which means to start. We can also use the phrasal verb to embark on a career. So to begin a career, to embark on a career means to start a career. We can use the verb pursue a career, which means to follow a career. And if the thing we're doing is too difficult for us, or if we are not good enough for that career, we can give up, give up a career, which means basically to stop pursuing it. We can also use some nouns with the word career, like career advice or career ladder. You know what a ladder is? It's something that helps you climb up or climb down. So climbing up the career ladder basically means to improve in your career. Career advice, career ladder. You can say career choice. If you are a student and you want to choose which major to study in, which major, which degree to pursue, then you are making a career choice, right? You can also say prospect, career prospect, which means the future of the career. And you can say career opportunities, like there are many career opportunities in the US. So that was the first step, to learn new words and new collocations. But then the second step is to write first. Before you start speaking, you need to write. Why and how does it help? When you want to speak, you need to think immediately. You don't have time to think about the structure or the words you need to use. But when you want to write, you have time to play with the words with the tenses, to make up new sentences, and then to memorize those sentences so that when you are in a situation, you can easily use them. These are called prefabricated patterns or, you know, ready sentences that you can use in different situations. For example, I want to use the word career with the adjective promising and with the verb have and say, I have 
a promising career. You see, this is an example sentence. Or, I want to use the verb pursue and the adjective academic with the noun career and say, I pursue an academic career. Or, I want to use the phrasal verb to give up with the word career because of, let's say, career prospects. So I can say, I want to give up this career because of poor career prospects. It means it doesn't have a good future, so I want to give up. You see, I'm trying to use the word and the adjective and the verb together in order to make different sentences. I write down these sentences and that's it. What's next? Step three is speaking. Now you need to speak, but how and with who? Well, with no one. Talk to yourself. So if you don't have a speaking partner, it's not important. Talk to yourself. You are your own speaking partner. You don't need anyone. What if I make mistakes? Who cares? You are learning something new. Of course you make mistakes. If you don't make any mistakes, well, then you already know the language. Why are you studying it? It's completely okay to make mistakes. And not just a few mistakes. It's completely okay to make big mistakes. That's fine. You are learning. But then if there is no one to correct me, well, little by little, you will improve your knowledge. You will join online academies, online classes. You can go to a school. You can have a, your own private tutor. And then he will tell you or the knowledge you obtain will tell you that this is wrong. So little by little, give it time. It's like a ladder. You climb up a ladder, right? So give it time. That's fine if you make mistakes. So how can I talk to myself? Well, Imagine a situation. For example, you are on a date and you want to talk about your career. Oh, you are so pretty. Me? What job I have? Well, I pursue a promising career. Uh, you know, I had an academic career, but then I noticed there is no good money in, you know, teaching. So I gave up that career because it didn't have good career prospects. So now I am pursuing a new career. So that was tip number one. Speaking comes last with all the three steps, learning words and collocations, writing before speaking and talking to yourself. What is the second tip? Tip number two, to improve your speaking, you need to think in English. Think in English, but how? There are two very good ways Number one is keeping a journal. Every morning when you wake up, spend five to ten minutes writing down the things you want to do, but in English. If you want to talk to a friend, if you want to go for a quick jog, if you want to uh, take a shower, if you want to go out for breakfast, whatever you want to do, write it down for 10 minutes in English language. And every night before going to bed, write down the things you did during the day. So you see, in the morning you're using some future tenses, at night you're using some present perfect simple past tenses. This helps improve your grammar as well. Hmm. Today, I'm going to hit the gym at around 10 a.m. Then, oh yeah, I have to talk to my friend. I will talk to my friend. I'm going to talk to my friend because it's a future plan. All right, I'm going to talk to my friend. Then I'm going to watch Maddie's latest video on YouTube, POC English. And then I have to, I have to meet my friend. Yes, I am going to see my friend this evening. I am seeing my friend this evening. Well, both are correct. And the second amazing way to think in English is to keep talking to yourself throughout the day. If you're listening to music, if you're walking on the street, if you're alone in your room, talk to yourself. When you talk to yourself, you don't even talk aloud. You can just think about talking to yourself. You can think about your sentences. And you see this thinking about what you do, what you want to do, or what you're thinking about in English will help you to think in English step by step. Imagine if the weather is good, if there is traffic, if someone said something you didn't like, talk to yourself in your head in English.
What? I'm a bad guitar player? No. I'm a great guitar player. I will show... I, I will show every one of you that I can play the guitar. I can play the guitar and I will play the guitar. See? So, that was tip number two, to think in English. Now, before we go on to tip number three and the last tip for today, if you want to receive the free PDF file of the lesson summaries for each video I post on YouTube, you just have to give me your email address. How? Go to the descriptions down below. There is a link to my website. Click on the link, go to my website, enter your email address and click subscribe. Tip number three, build your confidence. The number one reason why many students struggle with speaking in English is because they don't practice enough. And the reason why they don't practice enough is because they are either shy or they lack self-confidence in English language. Oh, I'm too shy to speak. Well, talk to yourself. Uh, what if I make a mistake? Well, that's totally fine. You are learning the language, right? So that's completely okay to make mistakes. What if I make a fool out of myself in front of everyone and say something crazy? I mean, come on guys, what is the worst thing that can happen? All right, how to build confidence. There are three things I want you to do in order to become more self-confident when it comes to English language. The first tip is to read aloud. If you are into reading the newspaper or a magazine or a book in English language or even your own texts, do it. Read the text, read the book, read the newspaper, read the magazine, but aloud. Because by hearing our own voice, we will get used to it. Sometimes our own voice sounds kind of strange to us. Read aloud. Let your ears hear your voice you will get more confident by doing this. What is a collocation? Hmm. Uh, collocation means a, a natural combination of words. It refers to the English way. No, it refers to the way English words are closely associated with each other. Tip number two, pretend you are speaking in front of an audience. So, why do we need to learn collocations, huh? Why? You need to learn collocations because they will help you speak and write English in a more natural and accurate way. You see, it's very important. Yeah, it's very important to learn collocations. And tip three, keep improving your English language skills. Keep improving your vocabulary, your collocations, your grammar, your reading, writing, listening, speaking. Keep improving your knowledge. And that's it, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. Don't forget to do the things I asked you to do throughout this video and let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, click subscribe. See you.